tonight we're going to be hearing from contestants for the mayor of Troutdale. We have two candidates, Doug and Jim, and we're going to be asking uh, questions that have been created by the League of Women Voters. This event is sponsored by the League of Women Voters of East Multnomah County and co-sponsored by Metro East Community Media and the Association of University Women, the Gresham Area Branch, and also the Coalition of Gresham Neighborhood Associations. So welcome, and we have just a few ground rules. As I stated before, we have questions that have been created by the League, and uh, we're also going to start out with, with opening statements and ending with closing statements. If there is time from the audience, we will be taking their questions as well. So let's begin with Doug, and um, would you please um, give your opening statement? Yes, I'd be glad to. I'd like to start out by thanking the League of Women Voters for this opportunity. I've been elected four times by the citizens of Troutdale to represent them, and this fifth time, I would like to be elected as the mayor of Troutdale. I think the people of Troutdale would like a mayor they can trust, a mayor they can respect, and I've built positive relationships over the last 16 years that I've been on city council that will do good for the citizens of Troutdale and make me a mayor that they're proud of. I've worked at on committees at every level of government, from city to county to Mount Hood Community College, the city of Gresham, Metro, the state of Oregon, the state of Washington, and a governor special committee with the state of Washington. I have a 38-year career with the Forest Service. I'm, I'm backed in this uh, petitioned to be the next mayor of Troutdale by the entire city council of Troutdale who are backing me to be the next mayor. I have a backing of developers that wanted to do business in Troutdale. I have the support of citizens. I have the support of business owners in Troutdale to be the next mayor. And I am so looking forward to that, to taking over the role that leadership role in Troutdale that I can't wait until January to come. Thank you so much. Thank you. Jim, how about your, your opening statement? Well, uh, once again, thank you to the League of Women Voters, the East Multnomah County branch, among the other sponsors for providing the opportunity this, for this particular forum. As you know, I've been the mayor for Troutdale for the past four years, and we have met with a tremendous amount of success, but it only happens when we all work together. As an example, one of the areas that was difficult in our transportation is at our Troutdale Interchange. We, unfortunately, were one of the last to get funded for our transportation projects. It actually is a safety issue. On exit 17, there was a problem of cars backing out on the freeway during peak times and actually stopped. That has since been corrected. We have spent 3.7 million in improvements to our Troutdale interchange, and we're not done yet. We've widened the north and south frontage road. And then, just recently, we found out from ODOT, and this is a five-year project that I've been working on because I've kind of specialized in transportation, that we're gonna create a two-way on Marine Drive. So as you come off of exit 17, the truck, the freight trucks will be able to turn left and go directly onto Main Drive and access the Troutdale Reynolds Industrial Park, the former home of Reynolds Aluminum, where FedEx uh, is located today, the FedEx Regional Hub. By the way, that hub has uh, provided employment for 750 people, and we now know with the Port of Portland, they're going to spend $43.1 million dollars to carve out nine industrial lots. All total, in the city of Troutdale, we are an anomaly in the state by having $844 million worth of projects, both proposed and actual. So we are experiencing something that no other city the size of Troutdale in the state 
is currently experiencing. Thank you. Okay, let's start with our first question from the league. What leadership qualities do you bring to the position of mayor, Jim? Well, I've been a business owner for many, many years, uh, probably, well, counting probably 40 years. I've had three different businesses, and uh, of course, you're working with employees and, and uh, working together with uh, individuals in order to get the very best out of them and so that you can support their jobs. Uh, the other thing that uh, has recently happened is the I-84 corridor study that uh, the East County area has been talking about for many, many years. Uh, through a collaborative effort of all four cities, all four mayors, that uh, corridor study is now completed. We've already identified the first project. There is a grant that's going out right now, is being written, to uh, make the improvements to 238th Drive, which will create access for freight traffic to the Gresham Vista Industrial Park. One of the things we need to do in East County, and we've talked about it, uh, the other legislators talked about it, is create job creation. Well, the government doesn't do job creation, but they do provide support so you can have job creation. So I ha work collaboratively with government level levels at federal, state, county, and local levels in order to get the job done. Thank you. Doug? Well, I have a 38-year career uh, that I'm still working on. And I have a lot of experience in personnel management. In fact, the, uh, the 20 employees that work for me now have called me the best supervisor they have ever had in their entire career. <clears throat> and I take pride in tre treating people with respect. And I take pride in my ability to work with different types of people. And I do bring that to uh, the mayor role of Troutdale. I bring a lot of budget experience. I've been a budget officer for a $30 million national forest. I've also been a budget officer for a $300 million national forest program in the states of Oregon, Washington. So I do bring a lot of budget experience, and I think that's going to be necessary in the city's uh, years to come with tighter and tighter budgets. I am known as a team player. I'm, I'm known uh, by everyone I've worked with in my entire career as a team player. And the surrounding mayors know that as well. The mayor of Gresham, Wood Village, and Fairview have endorsed me as a team player. They know that I'll do that and treat them with respect. Thank you. All right. What do you consider the main issues facing the city in the next five years, Doug? Well, there's a series of issues. The, um, one of the issues that's on the top of my list is finishing up our downtown area. We have an extremely uh, negative looking south side of the downtown area in a building that <laughs> had burned out a few years ago. And there's a lot of uh, vision that's necessary to carry that out where we have uh, an area of a two to three blocks in the downtown area that could be a very attractive development. If a developer were to come in there and we could use as a team the old police station that's now abandoned, the old city hall that's now abandoned, and in the middle is this deteriorating block, if we had the vision and the teamwork to work with a developer to put a new city hall in the developed two block area as a core tenant that would attract other developments within that area, I think that would be really a good way for Troutdale to go in our downtown to finish it off so that people enjoy coming downtown even more. We could use a hardware store. We could use a specialty grocery store so that people will have a full service in the downtown area. Thank you. Jim, what do you, what do you consider the main issues facing the city in the next five years? Well, the same issues that are fe uh, facing everybody in the city of Troutdale, and that is job creation. And uh, one of the things I want to do is make sure we get the transportation grant money. Now, we've been turned down four different times for our Tiger grant to make improvements to the Graham Road. And Graham Road is immediately to the south of the trip property. 
as I mentioned earlier in my comments, the Port of Portland is going to be spending $43.1 million to carve out nine industrial lots. They can do that, but without the improvements to Graham Road, uh, that's not going to happen because they've already been told by developers if there isn't proper access and the road isn't widened and improved, chances are they will not purchase those properties. That's number one. Number two, I agree with Councillor Doust. We need to work on improving to our downtown, on our south side. Uh, to that end, I brought a developer down there and we walked that particular property. He was there to purchase another property and he did that on a Friday and on Monday he bought the property. That's what I do and do best is bringing developers to our community in order to close the deal. Uh, looking for opportunities in order to make not only improvements to our community, but bringing the right people to the table. They're actually able to go forward, purchase property, and make those improvements to our downtown. Thank you. Okay, here's another question. What would be your top two priorities, Jim? What, 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 what are the top two? I think safety is probably really important. What's happened now because of all the improvements I alluded to earlier on the Trowdale Interchange, we now have a four lane all the way from I-84 to 26. Well, guess what? The freight traffic has figured it out. And the, as a result of that, we've seen increased traffic on 257th. Uh, it is my desire to boulevard 257th in order to create a traffic calming device, number one. Number two, uh, to create pedestrian safety net areas so that children that are going to the largest high school in the state of Oregon, Reynolds High School, and Walt Morey Middle School will be able to cross 257th without running the gauntlet with semi-trucks and cars. And that's particularly dangerous during the winter months uh, when it's raining and wet and they're standing in those turn lanes in order to get across the street. So that would be one of my top priorities. Thank you. Doug, what about you? What would be your top two? Well, in addition to the downtown area, I have two other things that I want to work on in the next four years. And one is the urban renewal area, which is behind the Troutdale outlet stores. It's 23 acres. And I have developed a good relationship with the developer that wants to develop that 23 acres. And what that would be would be an exciting small convention area to attract the smaller conventions to Troutdale. And there would be a vision of a restaurant along the Sandy River, a hotel complex, some small retail shops, some cafes, other, other mixed use uh, that would be enjoyable for the city of Troutdale citizens and bring the small conventions in where they would have a jump off point to do numerous uh, recreational activities in the gorge and around Mount Hood, around the loop. The second thing is, is Troutdale has a bit of a reputation with uh, the way we handle our building codes and our permitting process. This has been brought to light real recently. And there's some work we need to do to improve and correct some of the building and code and permitting things that we have in Troutdale to make it equitable for everybody that wants to remodel in Troutdale. Thank you. Uh, what techniques or procedures would you recommend for the council to work together effectively? What do you think, Jim? Well, I think, first of all, um, <laughs> politics is kind of like somebody said, making sausage. It isn't pretty when you're watching it happen, but the, you're looking for the end result. As an example, what I'm talking about, for many, many years, the city at Troutdale had a very, very contentious issue, and it, it focused around Title 13. Finally, we have come to a resolution on that. The city of Troutdale was able to kind of customize our own version of Title 13 in order to satisfy Metro. I think that, uh, as a collaborative effort, is a great example. Uh, one of the things I want to do if I'm reelected as mayor is meet collectively with the city councilors and individually and find out what their vision, what their goals are for the city and see if we can't work in a more collaborative effort to uh, reach a conclusion where the city of Troutdale and the, and the taxpayers can all benefit. 
Thank you. Doug, what do you think? Well, I think that um, I have worked with the city council effectively already. Uh, we have a great city council, and uh, they hold me in respect, and I hold them in respect, and we have a good working relationship among us already. In order to continue to do that, uh, teamwork, which is one of my specialties, uh, would have to be used. And the teamwork includes not only with the city council to be more effective, but the city council in, under my leadership would be working with uh, teams or special meetings with business owners, with the surrounding cities, so that we're a part of a bigger team, not just a team in Troutdale, but part of an East Metro team with the decisions that we make on a daily basis in Troutdale and with decisions that affect everybody around us. I think respecting each of my council members with a high level of respect is, is what they know me for, and that's why they're all endorsing me to be the next mayor of Troutdale. Thank you. Okay, now we've talked before about uh, business, bringing business into Troutdale, and the question the league wants to know is, okay, but what specific things, what, let's say, what two things in the next 12 months uh, would you do to attract and maintain business and industries that would make a positive contribution to the economy and to the, the civic government? What do you think, Doug? I'll give you the first shot at this. Well, Troutdale has a, a unique uh, situation in that we can attract business. Uh, we have the capability of doing that because we still have industrial land and we still have commercial land that is yet to be developed. And so there's opportunities for us to work with uh, developers that want to come in for the commercial property and industrial property, and I'm thinking of the Port of Portland uh, property north of the airport as our industrial land. The first thing we have to do to make that happen, though, is the council are not the economic development experts. That's not our role. Uh, we need to reinvigorate the West Columbia Gorge Consortium and we need to fund an economic development director which we chose maybe short-sightedly to unfund last year. But we need to uh, hire an economic development director that has our best interests in mind and that can work with people that are coming into Troutdale that want to create jobs and they want to work with the council. Thank you. Jim, what do you think? Part of it is marketing and one of the things that uh, I've tried to do um, when I took over as mayor uh, is rebrand the city. Uh, unfortunately, Troutdale was known for snow, wind, and ice, which uh, is a real non-starter. So we formed our subcommittee, uh, our economic subcommittee, and came up with the idea of uh, our Trout Doe's Open for Business plan. Uh, it has been wildly successful. We have now filled all the empty storefronts in downtown, uh, um, um, and there's several other storefronts that we fill throughout the city. Uh, we are known in the region as being open for business, which is an antithesis to what Portland is, and that's one of the reasons I coined that phrase. But part of it is getting out there and marketing. And uh, one of the things I do in order to make that happen is I write news releases and send photographs out to the Daily Journal of Commerce, Portland Business Journal, and so on and so forth. The other thing I think is you have to go where the people are. Where are the developers? Where are the real estate brokers? And that's the Columbia Corridor Association. Almost every month I'm there on a regular basis talking about and promoting Troutdale. And frankly, I'm usually the only mayor there which is just fine. I don't want the competition. So uh, we want to attract business to Troutdale to create jobs close to home. And if we're not able to uh, support that business in Troutdale, I've also contacted other mayors in the area and uh, shared that information so they can uh, go to their community or at least look at their community. Thank you. Okay, here's an audience question. 
Troutdale has been in the press many times uh, in a very negative light. How do you intend on correcting this if you are mayor in 2013, Jim? Well, um, first of all, um, we have to focus on the positive, not on the negative. And I think you overcome the negative with doing good. And you refocus your energies on the part of the city council to get them focused on things like building a new city hall. Right now, we're in temporary quarters. Uh, we're spread all over in the downtown area and throughout the city. So we need to determine we're going to build the city hall, what's the city hall going to look like, and then move forward in getting that project completed. There's lots of things that need to be re uh, done in our city, and I think people need to refocus their energy in a positive way and not in a negative way. What about you, Doug? Any thoughts? Oh, yeah, I got plenty of thoughts on that one. Um, the negative press we've had uh, recently, well, not recently, for the last months or so, is sitting right next to me. Uh, we have never, ever before had issues with a mayor of Troutdale like we have had in the last four years, ever. Uh, we have never censured a mayor before in Troutdale that I'm aware of, except in the last four years. Uh, we've never had to deal with the negative press of an elected official taking advantage of his situation to build something he wanted to build. And so the negative press, um, it's, it's really too bad, and we feel terrible about it. We do not want to work in that kind of environment. But what we will do if I become mayor is turn that around, to be a more positive attitude, and the only way to do that is to elect me as mayor, because that is the only way that the negative press is going to stop, sadly to say. Thank you very much. All right, um, I've got another question from the audience, so let's go with Doug first. So what sets you apart from your opponent besides the answer to the last question? you know, in general, philosophy or your take <clears throat> on, on things. What sets you apart? Yeah, I think um, there's a few things. Um, I think one of the key things that sets Jim and I apart is <clears throat> what I have brought up before, and that's being a team player. Um, the council knows that I'm a good team player. The council knows that I involve them. I ask them questions. They know that I respect their answers and really genuinely want their input on, uh, on a lot of issues. Jim, on the other hand, kind of goes his own way. And uh, the communication with the council, granted, is a little strained lately, but it's, it's been that way for a long time. So the communication between the mayor and the rest of the council has to be good. It has to be respectful and back and forth with each other in a real positive manner. And that is one of the major differences between my style of management and Jim's style of management. I do not want to take credit for anything that I do. I will gladly give credit to the rest of the council and anybody else that's working on a project with me. And that's just the opposite of what Jim does. Jim wants all the credit Thank for you. everything. Thank you. Jim, same question with you. Well, I think what sets Doug and I apart is I look at things through maybe a positive prism. Um, these ad hominem attacks upon the mayor and um, underlying, you know, uh, under actually very destructive to the city, and not only to, this, to the mayors, but also the city employees. Uh, it's one thing to cast aspersion on the mayor, but it's another thing when you do it to the city employees. And there's a real morale problem going on right now. And part of it is for the gentleman sitting to my right, who's carried on a smear campaign for almost uh, the day I entered office, and has continued to this very day. 
So uh, what I do is, on a positive note, is, is build relationships. As a result of those relationships, as an example, going back to the, t the 2A Marine Drive, that $22 million project, that is both federal, state money, as well as the city of Troutdale and the Port of Portland. That doesn't happen in a vacuum. Uh, I'm at more meetings than you can possibly imagine. Uh, if there's a meeting, I'm going to be there because I want to represent my city and I'm always looking for the ask. I'm always looking for opportunities to improve our city. Thank you. Okay, I think now we're, we're at the point for closing statements. So, Doug, would you like to go first, please? Sure. I have the um, endorsements of the entire city council uh, to be the next mayor of Troutdale. I'm also endorsed by all three surrounding mayors uh, the mayor of Gresham, the mayor of Wood Village, and the mayor of Fairview. And that says a lot. It, it's, it says a lot in the amount of trust that they're willing to put in me and the amount of faith that they're willing to put in me the next four years because they know that they're going to have to work with me in the next four years. I take the role of mayor seriously. I know what the role of mayor is and what it should be, what the role of the council should be. I've spent the last 16 years building positive relationships with people, and that's a long time to work on that. And my goal is to make people uh, proud that they're a Troutdale citizen. That's gonna be my goal from day one, is to instill that pride that people have in their city there's been some past mayors I've been proud of, Sam Cox and Paul Tolliver, some mayors that were beloved by the people of Troutdale, and I just want to be one of those mayors that's a beloved mayor of the people. Thank you. Jim. I think one of the um, attributes that I bring to my community is the time and energy that I'm willing to put into the job. It's not just in title only. You know, if you're going to be elected mayor, you had better be there. You had better represent your community. I can't tell you how many meetings I go to, uh, and I'm the only one there from East Monona County. Uh, I think that's particularly egregious. When I see, uh, when I go to the regional mayor's meeting, all the mayors are there from Washington County, and a lot of them are from Clackamas County. Uh, they're there to look for solutions that are common to all of our communities. I have that relationship, and that's what is key to success in any organization, whether it's government or private. Um, I'm endorsed by mayors throughout all over the state of Oregon, about a dozen of them. Um, also, I'm on the Oregon Mayor Association board, board member. I just uh, recently finished my term there. I also serve the city in the East Multnomah County Economic Alliance. I'm on the board member there. I'm the chair of the Columbia Corridor Association. So the point of this is, uh, once again, if you're going to represent your city, if you're going to be out there, you're going to sell, you're going to market, keep in mind you're competing with lots of other cities, 242 cities in the state of Oregon. And not only Oregon, but now we're competing with other states. And let me tell you, the competition is very, very tough. So if you want to bring jobs to your community, if you're trying to bring both federal, state, and county monies to your community in order to make improvements with its transportation or schools, whatever the case may be, you had better be out there representing your community. I'm available. I'm there. I've done it. I have a track record. Thank you. Well, I want to thank both of you gentlemen for a wonderful, almost debate style um, forum. And I also want to thank Metro East Community, Community Media for airing this event. And this is Deb Frick, League of Women Voters moderator, signing out. Thank you very much. Let's give them a big round of applause. <clears throat>